guys. Today I'm going to be reviewing uh, the Canik TP9SFX. Um, now, before we even get into this review, let's go ahead and address the elephant in the room, which is how do you say the name of this Turkish company? Um, I happen to be American, and I learned phonics as a child for English, and so I'm going to say it Canik because it, it looks that way. But I've heard people pronounce it uh, Janik. I've heard that that's the way you're supposed to say it, but I, I don't say it that way. I'm sorry. If, if, if that's a problem, just go find a different review or something, but um, I'll be saying it Canik today. Now, I'm going to warn you that I have run this uh, pistol in competition several times now, and I've already modified it some. So um, we're going to talk about what those modifications are, and I'm going to try to communicate what it came like stock as well, um, just so that you're you're very clear on what it is that you're getting when you buy this pistol. And uh, But I will also talk about the modifications that I have done on it. Um, so here is the... Wait, it's not there. Oh, that's right. Because of the modifications, it won't fit into the box. So let's go ahead and fix that. All right, so... Uh, here we have the pistol, and right off the bat, you might have seen um, that there's some stuff happening here with the magazines that's going to keep it from fitting in this box anymore. But we're going to talk through what it is that uh, we've got here in the box. I think the street price for these right now is around 400 That's without the Vortex. Um, I think I paid north of 600 with the uh, Vortex optic here. Um, Currently, I'm not running this gun in any sort of an open division, so the Vortex is uh, not mounted on it. I'm, I'm running it with iron sights. But uh, what you get with the pistol is obviously the pistol, which we'll talk about in a moment. You get one, two magazines. Um, you get two interchangeable back straps. This is one of them. They're plastic. Um, the gun comes with the smaller back strap mounted on it and the larger back strap over here in the, the side. I think that the larger back, this is the smaller back strap at this point. And then you also get uh, mounting plates, whether you buy the red dot or not. And so these plates um, will replace your iron sights. You don't get to have the plates and the iron sights on there. Um, but there are plates in here for Vortex Optics, uh, Trigicon, uh, SIGs, mounting system, and maybe Hollow Sun as well. I should double check that. I'll post a uh, text here to, to tell you what the mounts are. But the, uh, the mounts all are for red dot sights to mount them to the slide. So there's uh, four of those mounting plates. Now, if you notice the mounting plates here on the side, there is a hole. Um, that's for a little kind of a charging handle. Um, personally, I haven't found that to be particularly useful, but uh, it is there if you really just want to score the uh, the cool points. Um, this gun also came with a Vortex optic, the Vortex Viper. I'll pull it out of the case here. The Viper. The Viper, it's a little red dot sight. Um, I think it's the 6 MOA dot that this particular pistol came with. Um, it's great. I like it a lot. Um, it just doesn't fit with the, the divisions that I'm competing in, so I haven't been running it. You also, with this, get um, a little kind of a tool kit. So let's talk about that. There's some replacement fiber optics for the front sight. Um, and you get an Allen wrench that uh, is used to take the top plate off and then is also going to be used um, to swap out the mag release buttons as well. In addition to the Allen wrench, there is a little charging handle that I mentioned earlier, and this charging handle um, threads into the optics mounting plates here on the side and then would stick out of the side of the handgun. And I'll show you that later on in the review. Um, a little punch pin for punching out roll pins, so that's kind of nice. Um, an extra screw for the mag release button, and then additional sized buttons for the mag release. I think right now I have the, they're labeled. This is the medium button. Um, the small button doesn't really add a whole lot of 
extra thickness to the mag release. And I think I currently have the large button mounted on there. So but that's a little toolkit. Um, really, there's just about everything in here that you would ever need um, for just routine, like swapping out the different interchangeable parts on the pistol. It's, uh, it's pretty comprehensive. Um, moving to the top part of our packaging. Behind this lovely little door, there's a little quality control thing for whatever that's worth. There's a holster that comes with this pistol. Um, some people say that they like it. Um, I replaced it, and I don't plan to use that holster um, ever again unless I'm in a pinch and my primary holster breaks and I'm in a competition and I have to, like, maybe I would use it. But um, it's not super-duper great in my book. I'll probably show you that later on in the video. It doesn't fit in here very conveniently, though. There's a little kind of nylon cleaning brush and a... Uh, patch holder as well. I've never used these. I've just used my um, cleaning kit that I have for my other pistols. So uh, maybe those work out really well. The little instruction booklet. And then mine came with a Viper booklet as well because of the red dot sight. So that is it. That's all that comes in the box. So let's go ahead and get to the actual pistol itself. All right. So first of all, let's talk about the modifications that I've made to this pistol. And all of the modifications are to the grip area of the pistol at this point. First thing that you're going to notice is the um, flared magwell. This pistol does not come with a flared magwell stock from the factory. Um, I added this on. It's from Taylor Freelance. I've looked at all sorts of places for a flared magwell um, and for the magazine extensions and the place that really seems to have the the best products um, for a reasonable price is Taylor Freelance. Um, they do have the magwell, they've got the magazine extensions, they've got even longer extensions if you're planning to run this gun in some sort of an open class that lets you have a little more capacity. Um, they've got you covered there. So uh, really would recommend uh, Taylor Freelance, both in terms of the products they have and their customer service from my experience with it seems to be good as well. So I've got the Magwell. Um, I also have the magazine extensions from Taylor Freelance. Uh, the ones that come stock with this gun are a plus two, bringing you to a 20 rounds total because the, the base magazine is just a normal TP9 magazine and that's an 18 rounder. Um, these extensions are a plus four, so 18 plus four gets you to 22 rounds. Uh, so you get 22 rounds of goodness in this, um, pistol, uh, or in, in this magazine, rather. I did go ahead and go with the brass magazine extensions. They provide a little more weight, and they do make it so that the pistol will drop the mags free just a little bit easier. Um, also... Anytime you can add non-reciprocating mass to your pistol, um, usually that, that's going to tame the recoil some. So this magazine is not reciprocating. It's not moving during the, the shot like the slide does. And so having that magazine uh, extension be a little bit beefier is A-OK -okay in my book from a recoil standpoint. Um, I do go ahead and number my magazines, um, and then I also initial them. So if you see something blurred out here, that's just my initials because I don't think everyone needs to see them. Um, but the uh, I do paint onto my mag extensions because I'm using these in competition and I want to be able to track down if one of the magazines malfunctioning. Well, which one is it that's malfunctioning? So I number them and I initial them so that my gear doesn't run off. All right. The uh, other thing that I've done in addition to the magazine extensions is I also have a brass back strap that I've added. Again, we've added extra weight. This makes the gun's recoil a little more manageable. The magwell is also made out of brass at this point. Um, so, oh, and the, the last thing. I did go ahead and add on a set of talon grips with the rubberized texture. Um, the skateboard texture is pretty popular among competition shooters. I just have a thing where I don't like touching sandpaper. So um, I've got the rubberized texture. It works very well on this gun. So let's go through this gun's features. 
um, just kind of from the muzzle to the tail end of the, the pistol. So right off the bat, you're going to notice that there is no um, threaded barrel on this thing. Um, and that's not a problem. Most of the time, if you're shooting this gun in competition, I wouldn't plan to shoot it in open. So a threaded barrel for like a compensator or something isn't going to really be a deal breaker in my book. Um, if you were to shoot this gun in open, you'd be competing against guns that typically are like five times this thing's price, um, which is doable, um, certainly, but it's just not something that most people are going to want to do. There are aftermarket threaded barrels you can get for this pistol that will allow you to put a compensator or a suppressor on the front end of it if you so choose. It's got a fiber optic front sight. It's got a set of sights by Warren Tactical. Let me go ahead and zoom in here on this and let's see if we can focus on the front sight. That would be really cool. There we go. So you've got this nice kind of a uh, red front sight. And again, it does come with fiber optic replacements. If you want uh, a green front sight, that's something that you can certainly set up yourself. Um, the rear sights are blacked out. And if we can change our focus to them. Um, so they're just blacked out um, sights on the, the rear. Um, these sights do work reasonably well. They're easy to acquire. My pistol shoots a little high. I'm going to replace these sights um, with some sights from Dawson Precision, but that is, uh, the sights are serviceable as long as they are accurate. Um, again, on this pistol, for some reason, my irons shoot a little bit high, but, and I, I know that um, different sight pictures, like different guns are set up for different sight pictures, but, um, yeah, that's not the, the issue. So um, the sights on this particular model do shoot a little high. That I've read uh, some other folks having similar issues um, with this pistol, but uh, it is very consistent in terms of its point of impact versus point of aim. It's very accurate, um, or very precise, rather, for a handgun. It's um, My set of sights in particular just aren't super um, super accurate. I haven't talked to uh, Sentry Arms about that because, again, I do plan to just replace the sights. I, I would like to have an adjustable sight on the rear, so I'm going to make that happen. Um, but there's, yeah, so I don't have anything to, to be able to talk about their customer service there. And that's, that's on me for not contacting them. Uh, moving back a little bit from the front sight, you have the uh, lightning cuts in the slide. Now, some people might try to call this porting. The barrel's not ported, and if the barrel were ported, this would, again, push this gun into the open category in most types of competition. Um, these cuts are just made to make the slide lighter. Again, if you can increase non-reciprocating mass, like I've done with my brass kind of uh, accessories, and decrease the mass of the gun that moves during the cycle, you're going to have a softer recoiling gun. So they've got cuts here that reduce the mass of the slide overall, and similar cuts here at the front of the slide in the bottom. Um, moving a little further back, there is an accessory rail here for you to mount lights to. Um, you could also mount a frame weight there if you really wanted to. Um, so that's an option. Coming back a little bit further, we get to the mounting plate. Now, if you wanna mount a red dot optic on this thing, these two screws right here just screw right out of the, they're, they're Allen head screws, but they just screw right out. This whole plate here from right about here all the way to here just comes straight up and off. And you drop one of your plates on with a red dot on it, screw it all down and you're good to go. It's pretty straightforward. Um, moving on to the controls then, let's go ahead and talk about the trigger. And I'm gonna double check that the pistol is clear which I had cleared it earlier, but uh, yeah, we're clear there. Okay. So the trigger is the first thing that we're going to talk about. Let's go ahead and get a look at how the trigger functions. I'm just going to dry fire it. So you've got the little uh, trigger safety that you have to depress, and that's not a big deal. So it has quite a little bit of take up. And then we hit a point where we are feeling some actual resistance. We pull back just a little bit more. And then it breaks. So then the reset. 
So I've reset our striker and we're going to let the trigger out. That was it. That was the entire reset process. So again, come from out here, pull back, brakes. Let the trigger out slowly. That was it. And then, okay. So this is a pro that a lot of people will talk about that the reset on this thing is very, uh, very short. Um, you don't have to go through the whole stroke again. Once you're on the trigger, you're, you're back here and you just stay back here. You don't come all the way out with it. Um, I do like the feel of this trigger. Um, it's very reminiscent of the trigger on my Walther PPQ. Um, it does seem to, to be a reasonably good trigger. Now there are aftermarket triggers you can get that eliminate a lot of this take up. Uh, Freedom Smith is a company that does, um, a good job with those from what I've heard. I like this trigger enough though that I haven't swapped it out. Um, and I haven't, it's really not on my, you know, immediate future to-do list. Um, moving back a little bit from there, as far as the controls go, we've got the mag release. The mag release is large. Let me just zoom in and show you. Okay, so it's it's large, and I do have the largest magazine release on the, uh, the pistol right now. Um, it sticks out quite a bit. And it's right there for me. I've got a little bit um, lar longer fingers than average. So for me, it's just right there on my thumb. I don't have to shift my grip to move it, but I'm 6'3". So, um, you know, other people might have to shift their grip to hit the mag release a little bit. It's not, a, not an issue for me, though. Um, I do really like the magazine release. It's very easy to use. Um, it doesn't really, it's never really presented a problem for me in terms of getting to the mag release. Um, it's also in a good spot where when I grip the gun with my support hand, the magazine release uh, is free as well. Like I, I don't tend to get my support hand hung up on the mag release. So I, I do like the placement of it. Moving back a little bit more, we've got the um, slide release or the slide stop. And uh, it is oversized as well. Um, I do wish that this were almost a little bit forwards um, because I, I sometimes at the beginning initially when I got this gun would tend to ride that slide stop and the slide wouldn't lock back. Um, at this point, I've developed a grip that um, avoids that issue. But for a little while, it, it was kind of an issue for me. It's very easy to hit. Um, I don't have any problem during a reload with just slamming the magazine into the bottom and bringing my thumb down on the slide stock. Um, it's slide stop, rather not stock. Um, it's very, very easy to work, and it does stick out a bit from the gun, just like the mag release does. So focus on what I want you to focus on, silly thing. Yeah, so it does stick out right there quite a bit, and it's very easy to just snag it with your thumb. It's uh, it's good. I like it. Um, towards the very, very tail end of the gun, we do have a um, striker indicator here. So the gun has been fired, so there's no red dot here in the back. And now we've got a uh, striker indicator. It shows that, hey, our striker's ready to fire. Uh, it's very visible. It's very nice to have this on the back so that you can check that. Um, it's also good in a competition setting um, for being able to show that, hey, yeah, your striker's forward, the gun is safe. So the takedown of this gun um, works in much the same way that most modern pistols function. Um, you're just going to check to make sure that the gun is clear. Go ahead and pull the trigger and then disassemble the gun. Now, I've put about 50 rounds through this gun since the last time I cleaned it, so we'll see what's on the inside here. Um, because I've got the weight kit, this thing will just stand upright. But uh, yeah, um, inside we've got the recoil spring, and we'll come back to that. Um, but there's, there's some things to talk about there. We do have a five inch barrel. Um, and it's a, it's a good, seems to be a good barrel, seems to work really well. Um, 
and then the slide with the lightning cuts, which you can see pretty clearly from here. You can also see clearly the barrel is not ported in any way. So this recoil spring, let me tell you, when I first got this pistol and I took it to the range, I was excited because it looks like a lean, mean fighting machine. And after loading up a magazine with 20 whole rounds and then putting those rounds down range, it seemed like I had bought a single shot gun by mistake. I just wouldn't cycle. Now I was shooting pretty low recoil, 115 grain uh, blazer brass through it. And the gun just would not cycle. And this was apparently a common issue with um, these Canics when they first came out. Um, at this point, uh, I've heard varying things from that Canic has fixed the spring issue to if you have that problem, Canic will send you, like mail you a lighter recoil spring to help address the issue. Um, what I did is just shot some hot uh, 124 grain um, NATO loadings and, and cartridges that are loaded to NATO spec and nine millimeter are going to be a little hotter than your typical 115 grain loads or even some 124 grain loads. Um, shot about a hundred rounds of that through it and then took the pistol home and just worked the slide a bunch. Um, just, just racking the slide repeatedly. Just did that a whole, whole bunch. Um, haven't had any problems since. It will cycle anything that I want it to now. Um, I can shoot lighter 115 grain um, blazer brass through it. I can shoot 115 grain fiocchi through it. 115 grain federal shoots through it. 124 grain stuff shoots through it fine. Um, I've run 150 grain federal Syntec action pistol through it. That works just fine. Um, but there was this really painful break-in period, and I, I was actually concerned that I bought a lemon. Like that I'd just throw my money away um, because it, it was uh, that first two, 300 rounds, I had more failures to eject than I had rounds that worked flawlessly. It was really, really painful. Um, and you are getting a budget pistol with this. And there was a little bit of a break-in period that I had to go through to get this thing functional. It works fine now, um, but some of what you're paying or some of what you're not paying for is uh, just taking this thing right out of the box and running it straight in a contest. Uh, I, I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't recommend anybody expecting that because there is that kind of a break in period that I had to go through and a lot of other people have had to go through too. Um, now, again, I have heard that you can just order or uh, request a lighter recoil spring from Canic, and they'll send that to you and that fixes the problem. Um, I didn't do that and it does work um, just having put a number of rounds through it worked the slide a whole bunch um, and it's functional for me for sure at this point. On the whole I do like this pistol a lot particularly for its price point. I think that you get a lot of bang for your buck. Um, some things to note, though, are that I have gone ahead and made some upgrades to it. Um, I've added more weight to the grip of the pistol. Now, in some you know, divisions or classifications of different um, shooting organizations, that wouldn't be allowed. Um, I'm running this thing primarily in three-gun, and so I can add all the weight I want to the grip, and it's fine. But uh, if, if that's not something that you can do, it does shoot fine without adding the additional weight to the grip. Um but it does help to tame the recoil some having that extra weight in the grip. And you see these sorts of things in like the um, SIG P320X5, um, which had the tungsten insert that you could put into the grip. And then the X5 Legion has done some sort of black magic voodoo where they've embedded tungsten throughout their polymer um, so that the polymer itself is uh, has more mass to it. Like... This is a thing that people are doing more frequently with um, polymer pistols is trying to add additional mass to the grip frame because it, it does help to tame recoil. There are options available for doing that with this pistol, but they may not be legal depending on what um, 
you know, division or, or class it is that you're you're planning to run in competition. The other real issue that I've had beyond that break-in period with the gun is that it does, with iron sights, shoot, uh, for me, about four inches high at 15 yards. Now, that's you can still hit a man-sized target at 15 yards um, with that, but um, for a competition pistol, that is a little high, and it gets worse out at 25 yards, so the, the sights are just a little off for me. Um, I'll be replacing the sights, primarily because I want that adjustable rear sight and um, just sending, uh, getting in touch with Canik or Century Arms um, wouldn't get me that adjustable rear sight. So um, I'm not trying to fix this problem through Canik, so I can't speak to how they would address it. Um, but I do feel confident that um, this gun is a uh, consistent enough shooter that if I can get it sighted in, get it zeroed, it'll it will work well um, for its intended purpose, which is to be kind of an entry level budget competition gun. So uh, on the whole, uh, I do like this pistol. Um, I've enjoyed shooting it quite a bit. If you have experience with this particular pistol or a competitor, and you would like to leave any sort of feedback that you've had for the pistol in the comments below, please be sure to do that. Go ahead and like this video and subscribe to the channel if uh, you think you'd like to see more content like this. But that is it for today with the Canic TP9 SFX. Thanks for watching.